Hello, me bonnie bairns, and welcome to episode 7 of the Superhero Dog Owners Show. This is the show that helps you have more fun and less stress with your pet dog. We are here today... Alex, a little bit of a history lesson for you. We're here today on the banks of the River Weir. Uh, this is obviously the, the, the river of my hometown in Sunderland. That's the Weirmouth Bridge behind. There's some nice fishing boats there too. The glass centre's opposite us. And Sunderland was once known as the largest shipbuilding town in the world. Really? Did you know that? I no, know. interesting, yeah. There was over 400 shipyards here over the years, and the last one closed, I think, in 1988. So, uh, so yeah, big shipbuilding and, and mining history in the northeast. But enough of the history lessons, because uh, first of all, today I want to thank everyone who got in touch and said that they really enjoyed last week's episode where we uh, taught you how to how to get more focus from your dog and how to use the toys and the treats to get your dog to look at you more. A lot of people emailed in and said that they were having more success with their dog on their walks and they felt like they were getting more control of the dog, which is exactly what we're all about here. Um, today we've got a, an interview for you, a super cool interview with a, a really good friend of mine called Jane Arden. Jane is a, a dog trainer. She was the KCAI Dog Trainer of the Year and uh, she just got some super awesome stuff going on down in um Wagawuffins, the training centre that she runs. Um, but we have to go indoors to do the Skype interview. So um, Alex has set all this up. We're going to have to reset it all up indoors <laughs> for the interview. But I hope you enjoy it and I'll catch you afterwards. So a big hello to Jane Arden. Hi, nice to see you. Hello, Jane. Thanks very much for you giving us your time today, Jane. I really, really appreciate it. So we're going to dive straight in with the, uh, the Greyhound round. That's a quick fire round where we can, peeps who don't know you, can get to know you a little bit better. Are you ready for this? Are you ready to go off the leash? I'm ready. Good lass. <clears throat> All right, first question. Your favourite superhero? Wonder Woman. Oh, good one, good one. Do you prefer Indian or Chinese food? Definitely Indian. <laughs> Would you prefer to walk a Pomeranian in the park or a Weimarana in the woods? A Weimarana in the woods. <laughs> good one, good one. Um, your favourite dog cartoon character? Hong Kong Fooey. <laughs> I think that's the second time that's come up as well, so it's popular, definitely popular. Um, and red or white wine? Red, definitely. Brilliant, I'll join you, we'll have a glass. <laughs> <laughs> Alright Jane, you get, you, I'm going to give you 8 out of 10 for that, you did very well there, well done, well done. Thank you. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so we've been friends for a little while Jane, um, I know you've got lots of exciting things going on at Wagga Wuffins. And as I said, you, you won the, the KCA, KCAI Trainer of the Year. How, how was that for you? Uh, really exciting. It was a really fun day. Um, really nervous when we got into the uh, arena and they announced it. Um, so, yeah, it was pretty exciting. I was really surprised at the amount of people that had actually turned up uh, to vote and cheer me on, uh, especially when I came into the ring as well. Yeah, no, it was nice. I saw the couple of videos. That was they were really nice. They were really supportive. So what come? So that you, obviously you've come a long way with your dog training. I know you've you were helping people even before you got the award. But what what compels you to to want to be a dog trainer? I started off as a hobby. Um, I got a rescue dog. He was a Saint Bernard Cross Rottweiler. Was my first dog, and he had lots and lots of behaviour problems, a lot of severe aggression issues. And uh, it, it kind of stemmed my interest. I wanted to understand why he behaved like he did um, a lot more. I worked through some problems with him. He was a really difficult dog. I met a lot of people, got a lot of support. And it kind of really evolved. The interest just evolved from there. Um, and then I got interested in, I ended up getting my first Liam Burger. I got interested in dog showing. Then I had a little go at some obedience classes, work, and then moved, did a little dabble in working trials, and here I am now. <laughs> here you are, marvellous. So who was the dog? What was the first dog called? My first dog was called Bruno. Cool, cool. So it all started with Bruno. What's the, what's the worst moment you've ever had as a dog trainer? Because dog training and dog ownership can be hard sometimes. So I think it's good for people to know that, you know, we have bad times too. So what, what, what's, what's been a worst moment for you as a dog trainer? I think probably my worst moment was um, a one-to-one -one I went on when I first started out and the um, the wife wasn't there, the, sorry, the wife was there when he arrived to the one-to-one -one, but the husband was late back from work and when he actually walk, walked in he actually just booted the dog in its side and it yelped and ran off so that was, um, 
that was the day that I learned about how important people skills were mm, mm, yeah. in in, uh, in in the job role and how to kind of manage people and counsel people and talk to people and deal with some difficult situations. Yeah, but it's it's not all uh, butterflies and uh, puppies, daisies. <laughs> no, no, indeed, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so you you started off showing and stuff, and you had a Leonberger, Did you say what are the dogs if you owned? So I've owned, um, I've had Leonbergers for 20 years. I've mm -hmm. had four Leonbergers over the years. And I always say to people, I spent 20 years trying to motivate Leonbergers and then I got a Cocker Spaniel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah. No motivation required at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was wanting to get on now because you've, <clears throat> I've got a little Cocker, Sydney, as you know. And I know you've got four Cockers now. I've got four Cockers, yeah. yeah. And you seem to have kind of, I'm not saying you love cockers any more than any other breed, but you seem to be, uh, you seem to be banging into your cockers at the minute. What, what, a, what, what, what is it that's, you know, got, got you going with, uh, with cocker spaniels? Um, I love their enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. I love their zest for life. Um, I like the fact that they've taught me to take things less seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely had a few embarrassing moments yeah, with yeah. my dogs, and, taught, and they've taught me to take life much less seriously. And uh, yeah, they're just they're just lots of fun. They're busy. They're very active. I don't think they're really for everybody, no. but uh, I love them to bits. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. I think um, I think they're a little bit misunderstood. Maybe. It's, Maybe it's just me, but when I <clears throat> when I have Sydney out, and often people see him buzzing around and stuff, and and they'll say stuff like, "Oh, you know, I, I bet he's difficult to wear out, or I bet he's I bet he's hard work," you know, and and I don't think he is particularly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I but it's um, obviously I do a lot with him. You know, he he likes playing games, sent games, retrieves, all that kind of thing. So I think it's just because I, I knew what I was letting myself in for when I got a cocker. But do, do you find that as well? Do you find that people sort of I don't know, they, they, they don't realise that a, a, a dog like a Cocker Spaniel, as long as you provide the right type of stuff for him, they can be quite easy to manage really, can't they? Yeah, I think as long as you can get inside their heads and you understand them, then they're great little dogs to have. I have to say that my, my first Cocker was a shock to my system <laughs> after having Liam Burgers for 20 years. Yeah. Uh, I certainly didn't know what I was letting myself in for and my first Cocker was from strong trialling lines as well. Yeah, yeah. So I, I must be honest, uh, yeah, I think yours are slightly higher drive than my Sydney is, but he was, he's still, we went from Barry to Sydney. So that was, that was yeah, still quite a shock yeah. to the system as well. <laughs> what do you, um, what are you up to at the moment then with your, with your gun dog stuff? What are you, what are you teaching at Wagga Woofins? Do, do you have a lot of people, pet dog owners coming through the door with, with gun dogs? Yeah, so we do a monthly workshop, which is really, really popular now. And most of the dogs that are come, they're pet dogs. And the people who just want to understand their gun dogs a little bit more, get involved in the activities that the dog was bred to do. It's really good for helping people understand how to stay connected with these dogs, how to kind of hunt together so they don't go off self-employed doing things on their own. So keeping a nice connection, understanding them a lot better. So they do, um, they've proved really popular. We have a few people who come who do want to beat and do things a little bit more seriously from the gun dog side. And they tend to be people who are looking for a positive approach. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah which they get from you. And what, um, what, what have you done in the way of, of beating and stuff like that with yours or, or have you at all? Yes, yeah, so um, I work on a local, sh on, a, on a shoot. We go down um, to Middlewich and I work through the season on a shoot there beating, done a little bit of picking up as well. I've also done, I've been on a few, a couple of trial training days with one of my cockers. Uh, so that's, that's kind of my goal that I would like to get into competition and trial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. I think it's there's, that's the thing about the gun dogs, isn't it? That as long as you give them summer to do, then you know they're happy, aren't they? But and you and if you want to, you can go down the gun dog route of of beating or you know flushing and all that kind of thing. Yeah. But otherwise, that you know a tennis ball or a a raggy toy is just a, as good a substitute. It certainly is for Sydney anyway. I mean, he wouldn't be bothered about a 
a rabbit. Yeah, <laughs> they're really versatile as well. So with mine, as well as the gun dog stuff, we we do a little bit of agility. We've done some um, Stig does heel work to music. Stig loves dancing. Cool, cool. <laughs> he's like Billy. He's like Billy Elliot of the dog world. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've done. I've done a little bit of obedience. So it it's lots and lots of fun, uh, and they're quite versatile. They can. Um, apply their paws to most things really they can they can yeah as long as it's not boring no no <laughs> do you say boring or ballroom boring <laughs> <laughs> no definitely not no they're not a boring dog um we're going to talk a little bit about um it, it, emotions in dog training <clears throat> yeah we um I, i'm i'm a big proponent because people who i've learned from like david davis john watching of trying to use emotion in dog training you know so you're not um I don't know, I think the traditional, for some people, I think when they think about dog training classes even, you know, they think about the traditional kind of dog sit, you know, do this and, you know, it's, it's but it, but the more you, the more you can use emotions in your dog training and, and show your dog that you're, you're happy and, you know, you, you enjoy his company and you, you, you encourage him to do stuff, the, the stronger the relationship can be, can't it, you know? So t tell us a little bit about sort of what, what you've been working on with the, the emotional impact and, and learning for dogs. Okay. So looking at, people becoming aware of how their emotions impact the dogs and how our dogs are connected with us so things like if people are stressed if people get frustrated uh, often you find if people get frustrated with their dogs then their dogs will avoid them and then it ends up a little bit of a catch-22 situation because the more frustrated the more the dog ignores them the more frustrated they get and I often apply it to if we look at it in, in a human context, often, you know, if, if your partner comes home from work and they're in a real foul mood and they've had a bad day, you're probably going to do one or two things. You're either going to go out and avoid them <laughs> and just leave them to it, or, or you might try and lighten them up. And I think what our, our dogs often do the same. So they either start fooling around and jumping all over you, which usually doesn't help the person who's frustrated. Leave me alone! <laughs> <laughs> or they... Oh, they actually avoid them and it's and it's getting people to understand that sometimes their dog is actually just behaving in that way because of the way that they feel and they're acting. One of the things I run a mindful course, one of the things we do on the mindful course is we get people to spend a minute thinking about all the negative stuff. Um, things like thinking about, you know, what's the M62 going to be like on my way home? Have I got shopping to do? What time have I got to get to work tomorrow? And all those life things that we tend to worry about. And then we get them to train. We get them to then get up and train the dog. And you usually find it goes to pot and real interesting stuff like sometimes the handler can't function, like clicking clickers and stuff like that because they've, they've got this negative mindset. So they're struggling to concentrate. And we've had where the dog won't make eye contact with the owner because the owner's thinking about a lot of negative thoughts so obviously that will impact on their body language and then what we do is we get them to do a mindful meditation where they actually clear their mind of all the rubbish and then they apply themselves 100% to the dog and it's really really interesting how significantly different and how successful they will be in what they aim to achieve yeah 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 I suppose that would apply to all aspects of life, wouldn't it, really? But Absolutely. especially, uh, especially dog training as well. Yeah. yeah. There's a, I can't. I'll I'll stick a picture of it. There's that picture of the uh, I've seen it on social media where someone's taking their dog to the park. It's like a cartoon, and the person is thinking of, like you know, text messages, emails, their boss, all that yeah. kind of thing, and the dog's just thinking of you know, the trees yeah. and <laughs> the birds and, and all that kind of thing. And, yeah, that's the kind of thing you're talking about, isn't it? Really, you know, it's yeah, uh... yeah, yeah. They um, yeah. So that's the the standard mindfulness picture that most people use to explain how, what it's about. So dogs are naturally very mindful. I think un unless they're eating. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm the same. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, it's it, it's really interesting to to see, and I've also applied it in our instructor course as well about teaching people when you're working with clients to also leave those things that you should be 100% with the client and, and not thinking about your day-to-day -day life while you're spending time with your clients as well as a professional trainer and developing the skills to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. I think that I found a quote on your website actually, um, once you have focused the rest is easy and there's a picture of Pickles 
I think it's Pickles, isn't it? When she's yeah. sort of staring like lovingly up at you. And I think that, that sums up, doesn't it? You know, if you can, if you can devote yourself to a, some time to your dog and get some focus, then you're going to have much, much better results, aren't you? Yeah, when we, when we work in classes, the first thing we do when everybody comes in is we do focus and connection, and then we start training. I always say to people, there's no point. It's going to be really difficult. You're really going to struggle. Get the connection. Train, dog training is dead easy if the dog's engaged. Yeah, it really is. It yeah. really is. So what can people do if they if they listen to this podcast now and they feel like they're, you know, they want to, they don't really have a very good connection with their dog, or they could have a better connection with their dog. They could get better focus. What what would be some really simple things they could do to in their own home, you know, now to, to try and help them to do that? So do th we do lots of um, capturing and rewarding good stuff. So the majority of people tend to be a little bit reactive where they have a, pro they, a problem develops and then they, they, they look for a solution to the problem. What I do with my dogs is we spend a lot of time being really observant, looking for the good stuff all the time, capturing and rewarding. One of the things I do with my puppies is I'm just looking all the time. So... I may post stuff on Facebook that looks like I've trained it, but I've just captured and rewarded it. So I've never, I don't put loads of training pressure on the dogs. Mm. So what do you mean by I, capturing then? So really, if so, so if I take my, if I take my dog out and we go out to the local park, I'll just be observant. So every time the puppy looks and checks in on me, I'm going to reward that behaviour. Every time the puppy sees something new, is a little bit hesitant and looks for me for support, I'm going to reward that as well. I'm going to say that was a smart choice. We can reward with play, we can reward with food, we can reward with attention, mixing all that up. But just being very observant all the time, every time the puppy sits, I'll just be, wow, what a good sit. And just teaching, so it's just the things that they're naturally doing and reward it. if you reward it, it gets repeated. Indeed, yeah. Fantastic yeah. advice. Yeah, brilliant. That's something that anybody can do with any dog, I suppose, at any time, yes. can't they, as well? Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Jane, we're coming to the end of the interview now. I want to thank you very much again for your time. Where can people go to find out more about you? I know you're very active on social media and stuff as well, but where, where can people go to find out more about you and, and what you're doing at Wagga Woofins? So we've got the website, which is www.waggawoofins.com. And we've also got the Facebook page, which is Wagga Woofins Canine College. Uh, we have an event. We put the events and stuff up on there. So we do classes. We also do lots of workshops as well. We get people from all over the country. We'll travel over to the workshops. Um, we've had people far as Essex and up from Scotland as well. Glasgow, Edinburgh come over to workshops. Brilliant, brilliant. Excellent. Well, thanks very much for joining me again today, Jane. And uh, I look forward to having you on the show again next time. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. Bye. So how awesome was that? Yeah, loads of knowledge bombs there dropped by Jane. Some stuff that you can put into practice with your dog straight away, I hope. Um, thanks again, Jane, for taking the time to give us that. She also invited us down to Wagga Woofins um, so we can film a little bit more stuff with her. She got some cool stuff going on there, some online dog training programs too that I, that I know Alex has been helping her out with. Is this true? That's right, yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah, so so that's, so that's that'll be coming up in a couple of months' time. Um, we've got to have another interview for you next week on next week's show we're going to be talking to another good friend of mine um, called Amy Smith and Amy does a lot of stuff a lot of teaching with puppies in her puppy preschool down in Australia we had a lot of good feedback from the episode with Mark the vet can you remember when we were talking about um, uh, the puppy farms Alex yeah and a lot of people get in touch saying they didn't know about the puppy farms and stuff like that so I thought I'd stick with the puppy theme because uh, puppy owners you know you're dead keen to get your puppy and you, you want to go everything to go right so I, I, I thought we'd speak to Amy and she can give us some advice for what people can do with their puppies and hopefully have a bit more fun and, and more control and less stress with the puppies because puppies can be stressful so that's going to be next week's episode um, if you haven't yet please subscribe to the Superhero Dog Owners Show just search for it on iTunes and then hit subscribe and you'll never miss an episode and the last thing I want to ask you to do is if you're enjoying the show please Please head over to iTunes and leave us a review. Yeah, it will make you feel good and it will make us feel absolutely great. Yeah, we want to get some feedback. We want to know that you're enjoying it. So if you are enjoying it, then tell us. <laughs> tell the world. Leave a review for us, please, on iTunes. And that's a wrap for today. It is. So if we don't see you through the week, then we'll see you through the window. See you next week. <laughs>